I'm Derek. I play guitar. I'm Devin. I'm Andrew. Jeremy. Yeah, we only have a guitarist in the band. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all just watch him. Yeah. <laughs> you can edit that, actually. Toronto band Brave Station rolled through Kingston on Thursday, January 20th to play Clark Hall Pub in support of their latest record, the 2010 EP. Released, as you would imagine, in 2010, the EP has been called one of only a handful of modern rock records to feel completely fresh and exciting last year by Toro Magazine. The Toronto Star raved that it's impossible to disregard the talent and ambition on display, and iHeartMusic.net, among others, called it one of the finest albums of the year. Not to be outdone, Ben and the Pen on CFRC described the record as having surpassed lumber on the list of Canada's most important natural resources. Long story short, it's pretty awesome. I think um, some other bands would, um, would work in the direction of having songs they play live and then going into the studio and recording them, whereas we took the other approach, which I'm sure a lot of other bands do too as well, where you know, come up with songs, then find out how the hell you're going to play them after. Yeah. So I think uh, it didn't wasn't like rushed in the sense that we didn't have to go out on tour and play these. Like we weren't going to go play shows until we were ready, so that yeah. didn't really matter. So we just took as much time as we needed yeah. to uh, to record it. Yeah. And it, yeah, that's and yeah, I guess it was basically like a, a studio record. You know, we spent a lot of time, about six months in the studio recording it, and, and you know we. We treated it like a full length in the sense that all the production values that we wanted on a full length would be on YouTube. At the same time, we committed to ideas pretty quickly, though. Like, it, it wasn't, wasn't really like uh, full six months. Yeah, is it? no, yeah. it was. It was pretty. We had to commit to ideas, oh, and yeah. it was. It was <laughs> the sound is something that we were new to because we were like our, our other stuff was much, uh, much less complicated, and we we weren't as daring. And, but uh, yeah, I think yeah. more, more daringness to come. That's all I have to say. <laughs> With the record having been written and produced before being played live, I asked the band how the songs grew once they were put in front of an audience. Our live show is, I think, a lot different, especially for me vocally. Uh, singing in the studio, it's much easier. You can hit like different r ranges because you, have, you can hear your, your vocals so well. So I find that I sing a lot lower live, and I've really had to work on singing. Personally. Yeah, I think really I think playing the songs live though we realize is like very challenging because the record's very layered and textured and, and we added parts that we're not able to duplicate live so we're still trying to, to work on our live set and we're not you know we're quite where we want to be yet but uh, we've over the the last little while developed different techniques and styles that we hope we can you know carry on the next record and fill our sound out even more live. I think one of the hardest songs live was Color Us with Youth that was hard to fill out because of how spacey it was and yeah. I could I could couldn't even play the bass and sing it but at yeah. the time when we but started. But I mean I, I think that's the case with a lot of bands like really mm -hmm. your live show is always going to be so much different than what you record unless you're playing to like backing tracks and stuff where it gets it gets complicated so I think the two they're just totally different dynamics and you know we just embrace them both. We, we consider ourselves a pretty raw live band for the most part I think. Their sound has been described as if New Wave had started out in the Canadian wilderness. For a band featuring members from Brockville and Toronto, I had to ask, what influenced the sound of the 2010 EP? Um, I think, well, we've always, like our dad, our dad listens to uh, me and Derek. Our dad listens to pretty, listens to a lot of, a lot of, Variety of music, <laughs> but yeah. th that's like from Motown to '80s stuff to, to I, I mean, mean everything. Yeah. And, and he's got very diff uh, Andrew has very different influ influences than us, and he's from Toronto, and he's a yeah. big city kid. So I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I guess his his new wave flavor came in, and, and I think it, we're just you know we it's no secret that we dr take a lot, we draw upon our influences pretty heavily, and we just we listen to music that's from the UK and the US and Canada, so. We weren't ever really like into the, you know, strictly trying to be a Canadian sounding band. You know, I think we sort of, the across the pond appeals to us a little more. And I think it definitely shaped sort of our, our, our sound, I guess, to a certain extent. Which is why you don't hear any like Brockville rural <laughs> like <laughs> recordings. <laughs> I, I wonder what a Brockville song would, would sound like. Know. 
At the time of our interview, I had no idea what a Brockville song would sound like either. However, I did a bit of research and discovered that it sounds like... Well... So if you plan to spend some time in Brockville You're bound to have a happy stay For you'll find peace and joy and hope in Brockville It sounds different than... Brave Station. Moving along, in December of 2010, Brave Station contributed to HeroHill.com's compilation of Hall & Oates covers by Canadian indie bands. Here's how they dealt with the sheer majesty of the 1982 hit, Maneater. She'll only come out at night, the lean and hungry tide. Nothing is new, I've seen her here before. That was fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Like, it was, yes. it was definitely different. Like, I mean, no one, I mean, I guess I knew a lot of the songs just from, like, my childhood. And then when they asked us, I sort of thought Man Eater would be a good one. So we got on it fast. So I think that's how we, like, secured it, because I think a lot of people would want that. Yeah. I think it started off first, like, Shane and Bruce from Hero Hill. And those guys have been, like, really supportive of the band and covering our material. And, you know, we just thought it was a great opportunity to, like, align ourselves with them. And it was the only song, person that I could stand by all the notes. So I think the chorus is pretty epic. So, like, for me, yeah. having that, like, chant element that we could kind of modernize to a certain extent was what sold me on uh, actually, like, yeah, making an attempt. Well, but, yeah, so. but, I mean, Hero Hill is great. Those guys only review Canadian material. And, like, just to be a part of that and, like, it was, it was great. It was fun. Yeah, it just just the process was really awesome, too. We did it in, like, my li my little apartment in Kensington. Yeah. And we were tripping like over each other. And uh, yeah. I remember I remember trying to trying to recreate it was tough, too, because I don't like that the way that guy sings. I remember we set up the mic. I remember we had to – remember we, I was singing into the – the mic was, like, above me so that I could, like, open up my – no, it was my it was chest. Fun. It was a chance for us too to like let loose a bit and have some fun because yeah. our music is, I think, it sides on the more like serious nature. No, so uh, not all the time. One of the last, one of the last second additions to it was, I, I took it back and I mixed it after and uh, yeah, to yeah. the bands they didn't really know about it yet, but like. I, Every time I heard the song, there was a line where he oh, says, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the purr of the jaguar. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, I have to try and see if I can slip this by these guys. So I got the jaguar sample. Put, threw some delay, threw some delay on it, and I like kind of like here, check out the mix, guys. And then everyone's like, yeah, okay. And then he like, the funny thing was, the first time Rose heard it, after that line happened, he sang, he went rawr, and and at the same time, the actual sample came in, so it was like it was meant to be, you know. And I think, I mean, I did that because like we're not trying to be serious here, like. It's a Hollow Note song about Man Eater, and he's talking about Jaguars, so <laughs> it's kind of okay to, like, you she know. She cats, teamed yeah. by the purr of the Jaguar. The <laughs> exact. A she, a she cat. cat. Yeah. I could have talked about she cats and Jaguars all night. I really could have. But we should probably get back to the band itself. Toro Magazine included Brave Station on their list of the next big things 2011, which brings about the obvious question. Um, I was thinking more along the line of what's on the menu for Brave Station this year, and maybe more importantly, when, sweet Georgia Brown, when are we getting a full-length record? Uh, I, we, uh, a full-length is in the works, and, uh... Be some, sometime after early after summer, and I don't know what the the name will be. I don't know yeah, if we're gonna go with the 2011 yeah. thing, but yeah, yeah. It's money. yeah I think I think we might. I don't think my dad, my dad, my dad was like, if I, if I could give you just one one word of advice, call it 2011. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we got we got uh, took we, a little bit of flack. For that, yeah, I mean, that, that's good pre or bad press is good press, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. 2010 too has sort of like a futuristic connotation to it like you know it kind of represents like 10 years of like technological advancement like the stuff we've been through the last 10 years so i think in a sense like it had that futurism element to it that we 
kind of tried to capture on the record so it was sort of fitting you know like it's a, a place in time and in history and that's what the music is and that's what the band is so maybe we'll give the, the next one an exact date like wednesday <laughs> uh <laughs> like march 6th 2011 yeah so yeah we're definitely working on a full length and the plan is to release it later in 2011 you know what's funny? so there you have it ladies and gents Keep your eyeballs open in 2011 for a follow-up to Brave Station's critically acclaimed 2010 EP. An EP that Ben in the Pen on CFRC has called as important to music as the character Super Mario is to the video game Super Mario Bros. 3. All right, I'll just stop. For more information about Brave Station, do yourself a favor and head over to myspace.com slash bravestation or twitter.com slash bravestation. My thanks to the band for letting me corner them in a back hallway uh, before their show in Kingston. And to close things off, this is Brave Station live from Clark Hall Pub with the song White Wolves.